lady uh, advised me that she feared for her friend because her friend's son was holding her against her will. Made contact with the lady, and she in fact said yes, he was holding her, but she feared for her life. So we went, we went and attempted, we were setting up to make contact when he had left the residence and went to the golf course, which is off the Chief Hill Road. We then, going to that location, when he pulled out and turned our blue lights on and attempted to stop him there, and pursuit started and ended up here. Uh, it was a lengthy pursuit. Uh, I thank Little Rock and the State Police for their involvement. Thankfully, no one was injured. But here on 7th Street is when he ran two of our deputies uh, and uh, thus disabling his vehicle as well. Now, he did strike another vehicle here in Little Rock, which did extensive, extensive damage to it as well, but no one was thankfully injured. But we will have uh, felony charges that have been filed against him. You know, for the actions that have taken place in Saline County and either Little Rock, uh, CID, or the Arkansas State Police, I've talked to both of them, will uh, probably take over the crime scene here. And he, did he leave his vehicle and attempt to run? No. no. Of course, the deputy, one of my patrol deputies, was right behind him. Of course, he had already rammed him. He stopped once and backed up and struck the deputy's patrol vehicle trying to disable it. But uh, thankfully, uh, no one has been injured. You know, these vehicles we can repair. And he's in custody in Chowby. There was a, a warrant for his arrest and pickup. He was mandated by the court to be state hospital because of his drug issues and other issues. And he walked off from there. So they had an immediate pickup order for him. He walked how out long of the ago, state hospital? How long ago was that? Uh, just recently. Today? No, it had to be longer than that because there was a warrant issue. I think mean, to get that warrant issue, he takes it. And the woman who was in the car, that was his mother, that correct? Was, that was his mother. And do you know how old she is? Because she looked fairly she's, elderly and in a nightgown. Yes. She's 70. She's in her 70s, mid-70s. And, uh, she's got a little red place on her eye that was caused by the airbag, airbag deployment. But, uh, She's going to be fine. We're going to, all she wants to do is go home. She's willing to cooperate with us. Whatever charges we file, you know, and she's done. She was against her will put in the vehicle. Yes. Do you have any insight on why this has all happened? I mean, I, I, think, he... I think basically uh, he has a drug problem, and it seemed to be, I was talking to my detective who had talked to him on the phone, that he was kind of tweaking. And, you know, matter of fact, he called our 911 tell us to back off. You know, so he talked to our communications team as well. But uh, again, thankfully, no one was injured. You know. And the woman was able to call her friend who originally called you, is that correct? That's correct. Is it right? Did he threaten to hurt her during the uh, chase? He just wouldn't release her. I, I, okay. I don't know. I don't have particulars. Really, if he threatened to harm her in any way. He did find a baseball bat that he retrieved from the back of the board area and sitting right there by the driver's seat, but uh, he had no intentions of stopping. And that's his dog in the car? No, I think that's the neighbor's dog. Okay. Um, and is there going to be assault charges too against him? Sure. Okay. There's going to be several felony charges. Can you tell us his name? Uh, Carlton Johnson. C A R L T O N. John's son or John's time? Sorry. Johnston. Johnston. How old is he? Uh, he's in his 20s. Or looks to be in his 20s.